morning is a KCRA 3 presentation tonight on Common Ground. It was a history-making event, the fall of Saigon, April 30th, 1975. These images of American pilots helping Vietnamese families escape communist soldiers marked the end of the Vietnam War. People run around, the airplane took off from a different direction, just chaos. Father Joe Dixon was there that night. A boat carried Lung Yi's family to safety. I left my dad at that time and my son. Today, he's a leader in Sacramento's business community. Different backgrounds, different experiences, and different views uniting to create something greater. This is KCRA 3's Common Ground. Good evening. Welcome to Common Ground. I'm Suzanne Fon. Across America, communities are preparing to mark the 30th anniversary of the fall of Saigon and the end of the Vietnam War. Here in Sacramento on April 30th, the event will be marked at the state capitol with the celebration of Vietnamese heritage and the accomplishments of Vietnamese American immigrants. There are many people in our community who remember the war, not just on anniversary dates, but every day in some way, the Vietnam War sparks memories. On March 10th, 1975, North Vietnamese soldiers overwhelmed the city of Ban Mai Thuot, triggering what would become the fall of Saigon on April 30th, 1975. The Viet Cong stormed through Saigon just hours after the last American soldiers had been evacuated by helicopter from the roof of the U.S. Embassy. When it was over, the war claimed the lives of 58,000 U.S. troops and an estimated 3 million Vietnamese. Tonight, Common Ground looks at some of the Northern Californian connections to that infamous day in U.S. history, from the pilots who took part in the evacuation to the more than 700,000 refugees who fled to the U.S. to begin a new life. High-ranking officials in the South Vietnamese Army didn't just leave their homeland in defeat, they also left behind careers decades in the making. Joseph Hung Nguyen is one such man, tonight following a new order, a holy order. There's something about Father Joseph Hung Nguyen that catches your attention. A priest at St. Peter's Catholic Church, he delivers Mass in a language he's still learning. He speaks Vietnamese, and then, uh, but, but nice land is mostly Spanish. And uh, so he had to learn Spanish. I understand only two. Father Joe loves to laugh. Amen. <laughs> Ask anyone, most will tell you the Vietnamese priest is a mover and a shaker, creating small miracles with big results. He's so, so energetic, so hyper to do things. And so when he came and he puts us to work right away, almost. We fix the church inside and outside. And he speaks from his heart. And the people say, Father, even a lot of time, I really don't understand you, but I, we look at your expression, so we connect with you. Father Joe has so been in the U.S. since 1975. For the past seven months, he's been assigned to St. Peter's and Dixon, a small farming community of 16,000 people. Most of the residents are Latino and Anglo, and there are virtually no Vietnamese. And I have a two feet set. While his dedication to the church is evident, Father Joe hasn't always been a man of the cloth. He was a first lieutenant with the South Vietnamese Air Force. Father Joe flew countless missions with a squadron over Vietnam. But then, in April 1975, the city of Saigon was in chaos. People run around, the airplane took off from a different direction, just chaos, very unsafe. At the age of 28, without a single goodbye nor a dime in his pocket, Father Joe fled Vietnam three days before the Saigon government collapsed. I saw at least about more than 45 soldiers got killed at that time. And finally about 10.30 in the morning, I ran into my airplane and we took off in emergency. He left with the squadron, took off for Thailand, and then for the U.S., and, then, and he never came back. When Saigon collapsed, I lost everything. I lost everything. I even lost myself. Body of Christ. But he would find himself in the Word of God. The body of Christ. He joined a ministry, and after a decade, Father Joe was ordained. That's when I, after my ordination, and I wear the Vietnamese uh, costume uh, at the priest, still look young. At that time, I did not have a gray hair. <laughs> He's made the church his home. 
My Paris here is my family. Whether it's English, Spanish, or Vietnamese, Father Joe knows that he's reaching out to other immigrants. But, uh, uh, what we learn from him is that his will, his, 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 uh, his compassion, I, like I said, because he understands the migrant people. He's a, mi a migrant himself. This is the country, the land of opportunity. Do it. Try to do it. Discipline yourself. Learn and listen. And study. Study a mass, mass. You make it. Father Joe still keeps in close contact with his friends and family in Vietnam. He's returned to his homeland several times. Sacramento businessman Lung Yi was one of thousands of Vietnamese who evacuated by boat to avoid the wrath of communist soldiers. Now, 30 years later, he's living his American dream. He's telling new immigrants to keep ties to their culture and to embrace all that America has to offer. At first glance, Lung Yi's obsession with a certain Hollywood action hero may not be apparent. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? But everyone who comes and goes from this cafe... What can I get for you? ...knows him by one name. Lung A? No, not that, but this. I like the movie, uh, Clint Eastwood said the Dirty Harry. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Thanks, Harry. Believe it or not, that's exactly how 49-year-old Lung Yi found his name Harry, and it's caught on. Oh, I think it'll work great. Yeah. Easy to remember. Seven days a week, you'll find Harry running the show, cooking, serving, sharing conversation with customers at Harry's Cafe. Harry, he had a dream, and he always wanted to have his own business. But what most customers don't know is Harry's harrowing journey, the hardships and the decades of struggling to get where he is today. Harry is one of thousands of refugees who fled Vietnam after the fall of Saigon. He escaped by boat at the age of 19 and left behind his wife and his parents. And my dad's crying. And, and I left my dad at that time and my son. I haven't seen him. And my wife pregnant. Ooh. And I don't know what to, to do. He spent 18 months in a refugee camp in Malaysia before making it to the U.S. in 1978. Harry arrived with nothing. With nothing. And I'm not even cannot speak one uh, word in English. Harry found his first job in San Francisco as a dishwasher and a busboy. He eventually saved up enough money to bring over his wife and son Larry to America. Eventually, he worked his way to Sacramento, landing a job in the graveyard shift at General Produce. He struggled through the language barriers and everything else, but he always had a smile. Harry climbed the ladder, eventually becoming a sales rep for General Produce. But after 16 years, he wanted more. He left and opened a restaurant last December. There's a lot of people, they love this uh, smoked sauce. Harry's culinary talent was clear early on. Harry would be the main cook for all our potlucks, and everyone else would just show up. It's been nearly three decades since Harry left Saigon. This is the time that flies so quick. Today, Harry has three grown children. One's a lawyer, the other a lobbyist, and the third child is now in college on a basketball scholarship. Talk about a success story. Right next door to Harry's Cafe is his wife Lynn's beauty salon. And to top it all off, Harry's landlord is his son, Larry. This is um, uh, the end result of uh, a lot of sacrifice and hard work uh, on the part of our entire family. And while the fall of Saigon seems so long ago, it's a monumental moment that has forever changed Harry's life. And we have to come to a different country with no language, and we don't know what our future is, and we have to learn from the beginning just like a baby was born. Like so many others, Harry lost his homeland, but he found a new beginning. Over here, where, where, you know, wherever you live, it's freedom. Freedom to survive and thrive in the U.S. You're going to survive in this country, but you need to work hard to become successful. A Sacramento woman is reconnecting with her Vietnamese roots in an amazing way. Robin Namick escaped Vietnam at the age of seven. She never knew her American GI father. Common Ground's Deirdre Fitzpatrick has Robin's story. There's no way anyone could ever guess your background, is there? No, I, I think that 
people guess all kinds of things. They think I'm Hispanic. They think I'm. They're not sure. They know something is a little bit mixed because you know I'm obviously not completely Anglo. Robin Namick is Amerasian, one of thousands of children born to American servicemen and Vietnamese women like her mother. She knew that we needed to get out. She knew that um, uh, during the reunification, I think there were a lot of stories of atrocities um, on Amerasian kids. So that was her biggest fear. She just needed to keep me alive. It was 1975. The last flights rescuing Amerasian kids take off. Robin and her mother start a life in California, a life dominated by the question, who is my father? It's not so bad. 30 years later, she and fiance Greg White begin a journey to look for Dave. Even before we had planned this trip, I said that, uh, you know, should we actually do this? You never know what you're going to find. I mean, you know, when you're looking for anybody. Why did you think that going back physically to Vietnam would somehow link you to Dave? I had um, been told by my mother that she thought that some pictures may still exist. Now, this looks familiar. A lot of unknowns, you know, when we first set foot in Saigon. Would family members Robin hadn't seen since she was seven be able to help? Oh my God, this is a picture of Dave. Uh, we were there only about 24 hours until really that first and, and most uh, key clue fell in place. You know, honey, you know, I see something in the mirror on the back of that picture. Oh, Jesus. Greg? It's his address. An address, a face, a search. I would like to, you know, finally found who her father was. And what makes you think it's my dad? And finally. Hello. Hi, David. Yeah. This is Robin. How are you? A daughter's first words. Next month, we'll dedicate an entire common ground to Robin's search for her biological father. Coming up on Common Ground, one man's journey from Saigon to the state capital. State Assemblyman Van Tran was just 10 years old when he fled Vietnam with his family. Today, he is a symbol of freedom. And later on, keeping tradition alive, one stitch at a time. Welcome back. I'm Suzanne Fon. Tonight we heard from Vietnamese Americans who left their homeland 30 years ago to start a new life here in Sacramento. Some went back looking for fathers they never met. Now we introduce you to a very special man whose journey led him from Saigon to the state capitol. Assemblyman Van Tran is the first to be elected to the state legislature and he's a symbol of promise for the growing Vietnamese community. <laughs> The minute he was sworn in, State Assemblyman Van Tran made history, becoming the highest ranking Vietnamese American to hold an elective office, not just here in Sacramento, but nationwide. To be in the public service uh, process is, is important to me personally and uh, intellectually as well, to, to serve my community and my constituents. Tran is a former city councilman and vice mayor of Garden Grove in Orange County. It's part of Little Saigon, home of the largest Vietnamese population in the U.S. The 40-year-old assemblyman has a deep-seated connection to the Vietnamese people. They came over even facing uh, tougher uh, adversities and uh, trials and, and issues that they have in their family, and yet uh, through hard work, through dedication, and perseverance, uh, they became very successful. Tran was only 10 years old when he fled Vietnam with his family. It's been a long journey from Saigon to the state capital. To come to California, in particular, the Golden State, uh, many Vietnamese Americans and refugees have found the goal. Tran began his political career as a congressional aide at the age of 19. I was a sophomore or a freshman uh, at UC Irvine at that time, majoring in political science. He graduated from UC Irvine, eventually becoming a lawyer, and then he got elected to city council. 
Today, 30 years later, Tran is a voice for, as well as a representative of, his people. He hopes to continue empowering not just the Vietnamese community, but all of his constituents with a lifelong lesson we can all take to heart. Uh, it reaffirms the generosity, the freedom, and the opportunity that this country and the American people have afforded us to allow us to be the best that we can be. Assemblyman Van Tran encourages Vietnamese Americans to get involved in the political process, to get connected, and to make a difference. When Saigon fell, thousands of refugees immigrated to Northern California, among them Vietnam's top businessmen and women. As Common Ground reporter Edie Lambert shows us, you'll find an array of retail shops, restaurants and other businesses in an area of South Sacramento known as Little Saigon. There are two views of what it's like to shop in this section of Sacramento. This is like a home away from home. It's like a little, kind of like a little Saigon. But many non-Asians are attracted to this area because it feels nothing like home. I have never eaten duck in my life, and apparently they say the duck is really good here. There's a word for the kind of place that feels foreign and feels like home, depending on who's shopping there. Economists call Sacramento's thriving Asian markets crossover markets. We find people are coming from a long way away. Uh, to uh, take advantage of that. They're coming from Stockton, Modesto, and in the north as far as Redding. They're shopping in a cluster of businesses right behind South Sacramento's Floor and Mall. People primarily shop here for the food and the low prices. I like coming here because it's cheaper. Shrimp here, one pound of medium shrimp, $4.99. $8 in the regular stores. The shops are centered in Pacific Plaza, Pacific Rim Plaza, Little Vietnam Plaza, and soon this field will become Little Saigon Plaza with a cultural center and a chance for business owners to buy their retail space. And it's not all about money. When you bring businesses together, you also bring people together. I see um, lots of gatherings. I see this is where people from the community meet one another to talk about what's happening with their families. Uh, New York Life is uh, another uh, advertiser. The growth of Rich Fashion. Wen's community is reflected Fashion. in the pages of his magazine. Of BN is printed in both English and Vietnamese. His advertisers are local businesses and national corporations that recognize the growing buying power of the Asian markets. He says people in his community are uniquely qualified to take the risks required by entrepreneurs. After all, his parents took an enormous risk to move their family to America. My turn to stop off the plate, take that risk, and take it to the next level. Um, in the you know, BN magazine, is, is a big risk, but it's also part of the passion that, uh, that we put out here. And now he's hoping the success story will continue in every issue as more people discover Sacramento's Little Saigon for whatever reason. It feels like home to me. Is there a picture of the barbecued duck here? In South Sacramento, Edie Lambert for Common Ground. Labu Cafe and Bakery is a successful local franchise born more than two decades ago thanks to an innovative Vietnamese immigrant with an entrepreneurial spirit. The first Labu Bakery and Cafe opened its doors in 1981. Today, there are 26 of them in the Sacramento area. Trong Nguyen is the driving force behind them all. The business just took off, but more or less accidentally. I wasn't planned to, and it was take off and so big that I didn't have time to do anything else for the last 20 years. Nguyen came to the U.S. in 1968 as an exchange student, earning degrees at Sac State and U.S. in genetics. He planned to go back, but after the fall of Saigon, the scientist was forced to switch gears. By that time, we also have I, my brother and sister who escaped from Vietnam as refugees, and I basically inherited a bunch of kids that I had to do something with them. So I had to figure out a way to support them. And I thought I would create a little business so that they can have something to do while they go to school. His American dream began with coffee and croissants. The question was how to make croissants. I never made croissants before and couldn't afford a high end and wanted to make that. So I learned. After mastering the pastry, he opened up the first Labo, and now everyone knows in town that uh, there's a Labo, and it's just they're all around. In some of the cafes, you'll find telling images of his Vietnamese heritage, from the streets to the fields of Vietnam. 
for the coffee plantations, Nguyen's success is a blend of hard work and inspiration, says Lagoo store manager Joanne Johnson. I just think he just a real uh, innovator that just has a lot of energy. The man widely known for the Labu success says he's willing and able to do much more. You know, it's a lot of people when they think of me or related to me, they think that I should do food business. We have Labu, we have lemongrass, we have coffee roasting company, we have manufacturing, uh, furniture manufacturing and metal manufacturing company. Today, Trong is the president and CEO of World of Good Taste, the parent company of Labu. His success sprung out of a local franchise, an indication, he says, that anything is possible. I think this is part of what being a, an immigrant in the United States is all about. This is a land opportunity. If people want to do things, they can do it. Nguyen has been honored with a number of awards, including the Human Rights Award and the Distinguished Service Award. He's also been named Business Person of the Year in the Sacramento community. A symbol of grace, elegance, and beauty, the Aoya is enjoying a resurgence among Vietnamese Americans. Find out how Chao Nguyen is saving history with a sewing machine. Thirty years after the fall of Saigon, Vietnamese immigrants continue to arrive in the U.S. They bring with them traditions that continue to flourish, like the Vietnamese long dress or ao yai. Chao Nguyen has been sewing traditional Vietnamese dresses all her life. She brought her skills to the U.S. when she immigrated here just last year. And although Nguyen speaks no English, she's not at a loss when it comes to describing the beauty behind the ongoing tradition, the Vietnamese long dress or ao yai. She says the Vietnamese dress needs to be long, the collar needs to be high, then it's truly Vietnamese. The dress is form-fitting to the waist with long panels in front and back to cover long satin trousers underneath. Nguyen says the traditional dress illustrates elegance and grace. And while the styles are evolving, becoming more fashionable and more modern, Nguyen believes. You'll always find true beauty in the traditional look. Many of the stories that we have shared here tonight on Common Ground are reflective of my own. Most of my family immigrated to the U.S. after the fall of Saigon. And now, 30 years later today, here I am. Thank you so much for joining us on Common Ground. Good night.